During the Tournament of Power, we were introduced to possibly the most powerful warrior in all the multiverse, yet another opponent of Goku's who, ultimately, would be outdone by his own arrogance. While many were disappointed by his lackluster generic backstory, what if we dove deeper into it and fleshed it out a bit more? What if we went back in time to see everything he would eventually become materialized piece by piece? What if we saw everything from Jiren's point of view that occurred during his childhood? This story is created by Terra Nova. Support her and this manga on Twitter, Patreon, and many other platforms using the links below. Age 739. The same year that in our universe, the Oracle Fish will predict Beerus is destined to meet an enemy of threat in 39 years, forcing Beerus to fall into a slumber early. Though it is worth noting, it's not made clear if all universes are aligned to the same year. A familiar, beautiful blue sky towers above an almost oasis-like terrain. A father and son stand beside one another. This is Jiren. Obviously not the one we're accustomed to, but just before his destiny would begin, when he wasn't much older than even Gohan when we were first introduced to him. His elder tells his child to focus his inner key like he taught him, then take aim at that rock in front of him. He then tells his little one to release his key. Successfully obliterating the rock into hundreds of pieces, the kiddo couldn't be happier with the results. Jiren's dad praises him and compliments he's getting good at this. He himself couldn't even control his key this well when he was so young, foreshadowing what an amazing warrior he will one day be. Jiren laughs saying that was fun and asks if they can do that again. He could blow up that really big rock with an even bigger blast. But alas, Big Warrior remarks to Little Warrior they may have to head back to the village shortly. His mother needs him to deliver some goods to their neighbors of Korra sometime today. Perhaps he could give him some flying lessons when he returns home. And that works too. Jiren has always wanted to learn how to do that. Placing his son on his shoulder and taking him into the air, the two look at the village below. With pride in his voice, the father explains to his cub that everything the light touches is their kingdom. <laughs> Jiren shouts he wants to fly through the stars, just like him. His father promises, in time, he will. The more he practices, the stronger he'll get. Heck, if he's not careful, Jiren may even surpass his old man here in no time. A reality that would eventually come to be, one neither can even begin to imagine. Just as a force of some kind shoots through the Elder's mind, we're introduced to Jiren's mother and discover that Jiren's father's name is Ron. As mentioned before, the goods she prepared to deliver to the neighboring Korahanes are ready to go. Confused, the boy calls out to his dad who smirks and explains that was his mother. Looks like it's time to head out, supposing they should both head back to the village. Though that doesn't sound greatly interesting to young Jiren. Looking around, he excitedly suggests he could go play down by the river. He wants to watch the white bait swim by. While apprehensive, his father agrees but warns not to wander too far off. Jiren needs to head back by lunchtime. The pair take off in other directions, knowing they'll see each other again soon. Back in the village. We get an up-close look at the living conditions of Jiren's people. Simple yet effective. As Ron spots a giant bird cooking on an open fire, he gets an idea. Blasting it, he proclaims that the cook feast his eyes on this. In disbelief, the man has to see, or taste for himself. And it's perfect! When his partner spots him. Naming her as Anella, he apologizes for getting a bit sidetracked. She reminds him that he has work to do. The folks of Koraha are in needs of their medicinal herbs. In exchange, he could trade for some of their fabrics. She hands him a bag and asks, wouldn't it be nice to have better clothing, especially for their little rascal? And of course that would be nice. In fact, he was just teaching Jiren a few new tricks. That's when Anella notices his absence, now questioning where he is anyhow. Facing his general direction, Ron informs he's playing down by the stream. 
but quickly growing nervous. Is he sure it's safe for him over there? Prompting Ron to insist she relax. He just loves being around nature, and he's a smart kid. And there's no stopping him. He'll just sneak out again otherwise. After all, it's not easy being the only child in the village. He gets bored and restless. Though while exhaling a big sigh, his better half supposes he's right. But she'll probably go pick him up shortly. He places his hand on her shoulder. Jiren could be heading home soon on his own. Either way, Ron figures he should get going. It's quite a long trip and he doesn't want to miss out on the feast. Anella tells him to take care and not to be late. He assures he won't be gone more than an hour. See you soon. Later that day, sure enough, Jiren is seen peering down into the creek. Even from a distance, it could be heard reverberating a calming, flowing sound. He happily spectates the whitetails he spoke of earlier, which are possibly inspired by hairtail fish of the real world. Though this iteration is a bit smaller and much, much cuter. as he discovers a tiny bird chirping in distress. He picks it up to ask if he's lost. Seeing a nearby tree, he thinks he has a feeling where this little guy belongs. Sure enough, a nest full of his brothers and sisters. He tells the bird not to worry, he'll help him out. Proving, like many youngsters, his heart is as pure as they come. So in the meantime, he'll keep him safe. Though unfortunately, the boy finds out very quickly the tree's too tall for him to climb. Or rather, he's simply run out of nearby branches to pull himself any further. But he knows he can't give up. Maybe he can try. Making his way to the nest, he places the baby back home. But he did it! He can fly now! He's amazed himself with his ability to teach himself something he's wanted to do what feels like forever. Then he realizes he still has to find a way back down to the ground. Another ironic parallel to a situation Gohan found himself in while training with Piccolo. Slowly repeating how he did it the first time. He's able to find himself on the grass again safely. The boy's ecstatic that he managed to fly all by himself. He has to go tell his mom and dad. Shortly beforehand. Ron is seen making his way to the aforementioned trade agreement. But he feels his wife calling out for help. He immediately returns home to a scene of utter devastation. His entire village has been completely ravished. Bodies lay motionless in the streets and their homes burn, while any survivors run for their lives from an unseen aggressor. Pushing further into the destruction, one of his neighbors bellows out that he must flee. Though he doesn't appear to have any intention of doing so, he inquires what happened and who's responsible for this. The man implores it's no use. Ron must take his family and escape while he still can. <laughs> when he's struck down with a single strike, the culprit bearing the appearance of a sinister apparition of some kind.
the monster closing in on Ron. What is and where did this fiend come from? What is it want? Most importantly, what has or will become of Anella and Jiren? Is this the catalyst for Jiren's motivation to become the fighter we saw in the Tournament of Power? Or something much worse yet to come?